Something that was extremely difficult was all of the hate that we got. 90% of the comments on all of our short form video were people attacking us, attacking our kids, attacking our way of life. Realize that hurt people hurt people. Hey guys, how is it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, brand new people to talk about. This is Red, White and Bethune. Now, now, pronunciation Amy. I thought it was Bethune. It might very well be. I have had to look it up several times and it's Bethune. Bethune, Bethune, either way, I have tried to see, I've tried to watch enough content for them to actually say the name of their channel. So I'm just going to put Beth, Bethune, 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 either way, this is who we're talking about today. And I was actually told, Amy, can you please go check them out? Now, I went straight to their TikTok because I wasn't sure which which platform they were on and the very first thing that i actually stumbled across was this so obviously i was caught you know hook line and sinker like what is going on here they do actually have a youtube channel which has amassed a, a a big quite a big following i will just say they have stopped posting on their tiktok because they're not happy with short form videos and they were getting a lot of negative attention now they have actually released a video basically saying why they have decided to stop doing short form videos this includes tiktoks and youtube shorts so i'm actually going to play it and completely dissect it and it's going to be like basically breaking it all down for you we're just going to watch it and break it down so definitely stay tuned for that i'm just going to do the quickest synopsis on what this family is all about how they live and why why some people have an issue with them you are awesome you are so incredibly amazing now straight off the bat we have mum jen and we have dad kyle and they basically live in this converted bus they do in fact call it a bus so that is what i'm gonna be calling it as well they share their bus with numerous dogs and i believe two kids two or three kids um i'm not gonna be fo focusing too much on the kids well at all so i think it's two two or three kids and several dogs and they basically document their journey living a sort of a more unique lifestyle, a more unique approach. They're sort of within the niche of being like fan life, traveling about almost nomadic, almost. I, I just recently co started covering the family of nomads. Well, these guys, you, you can kind of put them on the same playing field, I suppose. They haven't reached the same level of success, but the controversy that sort of surrounds it is kind of the same. You know, people saying that the the spaces in which the kids sleep and live and operate in you know are far too small and unlike the family the family nomads unlike them their bus you know these guys' bus is a lot smaller the spaces in which their kids sleep are much much smaller which we're going to get into in just a minute um, but they do take a similar approach in how strict they are with their chores and things like that and i always say this so you know like giving your kids stuff to do ensuring your kids do chores is a great great thing but i don't know what it is i feel like a lot of a lot of these van life vloggers family vloggers for instance they they are actually quite strict they are quite strict with their chores and you know what what their kids have to do there have been several tiktoks that have been made covering this exact issue the main issue I have with this is the spaces in which their kids have in this really small area. And once again, I'm not trying to shame the way that people decide to live. But when when I show you just, just the cramped quarters and the, the lack of privacy that you would have living, living in a space like this, especially if you're getting a bit older, it is vastly different to the other family that we recently just covered. These were our old bunks for our kids, but check out what we did now. Amazing room, they have tons of headspace, and each bunk has its own TV. Definitely a pretty cool upgrade. Now obviously, as you can see, it's an extremely tight area. It's not so much the... the the sleeping space it's the fact that the only bit of privacy they have is a curtain separating it so that's no you know no space from sound or whatever it's like it's like camping all the time which some people love doing that but what i'm trying to get at is as you get older 
just having a piece of fabric separating you from the rest of the people that live in the air like from everyone else might not be the best possible thing and obviously the community have picked up on that and they weren't very happy about it the kids living in shelves from harry potter had a better room they have no privacy. I would be really overwhelmed. I could never live like this. Tight, no space and privacy. Like imagine trying to sleep in the morning, but there is people moving around. And this is the overall consensus of what people are trying to say. Because obviously you don't come across many people, many people in today's world who decide to live like this. And obviously it can work 110%. But people did have some valid, valid points to make when you have slightly older kids who are living with very little privacy. Last night, Molly and me went out with our friends and we had a good time shopping, but the dishes didn't get done. The difference this time though is she gets to do them in the morning without losing her technology because every situation is different, just like this one. Go outside and play or even get on her technology. Now, of course, they are quite strict on the whole chore from there. I'm gonna show you a little clip in a minute of them sort of explaining how their chore lists go and the problems that people are finding with it and the fact that you'll see that you know the some of the chores are to make to make the parents bed to sort out the parents washing and things like that so it does kind of go more into that realm i will say that why are you filming your kid doing the dishes it doesn't even look like she even knows that she's being filmed this is they're very very open with this kind of stuff if her and her husband are having like a bit of a barney which you know means a bit bit of a fight they'll video record it they're very open like that and they will go to the lengths of you know sort of videoing their kids when they don't really look like they want to be filmed when when they're just trying to get on and do some chores you know um or if one of the kids are having a bit of a rough day the dad did a video where he was saying he was going to help 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 her kid out because the kid was getting really bad anxiety about doing all these dishes the thing with these guys is that one kid will be responsible for doing all of the washing up so it won't just be like all of them go anyway this isn't about the chores in particular these are just some of the issues that people find with it. We don't buy our kids toys whenever they ask for them instead they have to earn the money to buy them themselves. That wouldn't be a problem if um the chore list like that she had was different and basically the mom's chores were running instagram posting instagram stories just doing du stupid shit like that and reorganizing their bus whenever she already had like she has three kids and she had three different things listed for them to do to reorganize and one of the um kids chores was to make the mom's bed and someone commented and, and they were like that's why like children go no contact with their parents as soon as they can and i literally went no contact with my mom a couple of weeks ago and she did that shit to me my entire childhood growing up which like doing chores is one thing but i was not allowed to do anything unless the entire house was spotless smelled clean the way that my mom liked it i mopped the floors i swept the floors i vacuumed the floors i used bleach whenever i was mopping if i didn't use bleach i had to redo it i cleaned every single bathroom i had to pour fabuloso into the toilets i had to hang up my mom's clothes i had to fold my mom's clothes i had to fold my dad's clothes i had to put everything up or else i would get yelled at so a combination of all of that and there's blatantly numerous other stories as well that that have come out about about their sort of their way of living and the fact that their kids don't really have a lot of privacy they're filmed obviously and the way in which they sort of treat the kids and the chores and stuff like that anyway so a lot of people were not very happy and they flocked to their tiktok to tell them this and they basically got driven off of the tiktok platform and we're now going to dissect their um, their sort of goodbye video. The reason why I haven't gone into too much detail about just every single little thing about these guys for this bit is because they already address a lot of it in the video. And I really don't want to have to just keep repeating myself. But let's just give it a little watch. In society's eyes, having that many views, gaining that many subscribers, that's their definition of success. But it taught us that that is not what we define as success. In, in all honesty and transparency, that was my goal. That was my idea of what I thought I needed. We make these videos to be viewed, but I feel like these videos are viewed by the wrong people or the people that we don't want or need in our, in our lives. I feel like people just don't give it a second thought into the fact that you can't pick and choose who the hell watches your videos. You cannot pick and choose that whatsoever. It doesn't work. Every, every, you know, every content creator kind of goes into it a bit like a hobby thinking that they're not really going to get anywhere. They then start getting places. They then want to keep on seeing those figures rise and the subscriber count rise. Like it's only natural. It's like, it's like a human reaction to it, isn't it? You just want more. But I will say that you can't pick and choose like oh we were getting the wrong sorts of attention it's like what do you mean the wrong sort like who do you think you're on a public platform 
a public platform. You cannot pick and choose who sees your content. And if you start doing some controversial stuff, you best believe that people will be out in droves. In order for us to achieve a viral video, our videos had to trigger people. We had to come up with topics to make people mad, to argue in the comments, to get the algorithm to put our video out to more people. That's just not what we wanna do. Our mission is to inspire you to live a life you love. All of our content that we put out, it had a purpose behind it. I'm ultra confused. Are you wanting to inspire people or are you wanting to create controversial content? Because you can't you can't have it both ways. But I will say drama makes the world go round, especially on the internet. The more controversial you are, the more drama you inflict, the more people talk about you, the more your stuff go up. I mean, literally look at it's quite rare that you find YouTubers who manage to make it without being like really, really make it without having a little bit of controversy. Um, but, do you know, I feel like you just can't really have it both ways. Either come in and inspire people or troll them. But I, you can't say that you're going to do both. All of our videos of the kids, you know, talking about doing their chores or their bunk. The purpose of us putting those out were to show people that this life is doable. An alternative lifestyle with a family is absolutely achievable. And that was not how they were received. We get an insurmountable amount of hate for our kids' bunks that people say look like coffins. But my husband is six foot two inches tall and he can fit snugly. I think that it can be, like, things can be achievable, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's practical or that it's going to work in the long run. And that's just, I think this is what people were having the issue with. You can't put content out there, especially if it revolves around children. A lot of people are going to have their thoughts and opinions. And if that many people are telling you this, then maybe, maybe you should just listen slightly. But then again, they are your kids. You you know them, you see them day in, day out. So obviously you're going to know. But if you have that many people telling you this, take it on board or just take it on the chin. Where I'm sitting is probably one of our most popular videos to date. And it's one of our kids' bunks. When we started this life, the kids had triple bunks. They were really small and it worked for them. When they grew, we knew we were going to put their needs first and we wanted to showcase putting their needs above everything else and we did a remodel. Oh god, I hate sounding like the biggest Debbie Downer, but it's when she said showcase showcase putting their needs first, it's like you did it just to shut people up, you did it for show. I mean, I don't want to be horrible, but those bunks, it did literally look a bit like a shelf. But you're not really giving them much else. I mean, of actually, no, 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 no. Hold up, Amy. Yes, you definitely are. You're giving them their own little separate area now, obviously, but it's still a really similar setup to how it was. So when you then say showcase it, you're sort of saying, well, I just want everyone just to see, see what a good thing we're doing by giving them their own section. And it's like, it's only my, it's only minutely better than what it was. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they've added an extension onto the bus, if you, if you see what I mean. Even with giving our kids their own space. People still called us such awful things and terrible names. And honestly, that's not the kind of content that we want to put out. We don't want to put out triggering content, especially ones that we had to use our kids to gain views. It's just not for us. One person even remarked sexually about Molly, our daughter. To expose our kids to that side of the internet we just weren't willing to do. Now this bit did kind of pee me off a little bit because all of those TikToks, all of that stuff is still there on the internet. If people are making sexual remarks about your kids, guess what? You're still talking about them in vlogs. You still show them every now and again. Those TikToks are still there. And to say that, you know, you're just not willing to do that, but you have. I mean, you go on your website and you're very much advertising it as if, you know, you have three kids, you two of you, you got dogs and you live you live in a bus, you hear? You're still advertising it as if you are this family, this family channel, even though obviously you're not you're not a stereotypical family channel. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, oh, what so-and-so is doing today. You're still involving them in your content. So you can't choose the upper ground. You can't choose the high ground in this situation because those TikToks and all of that, that's still there. So you can't, you can't be saying this and then act as if you care so much. 
Something that was extremely difficult was all of the hate that we got. You know, were people attacking us, attacking our kids, attacking our way of life, just spewing so many hurtful things out at us. It really humbled us. It made us do a lot of reflection because we realized that hurt people hurt people. How many times? Take a shot every single time you've heard an influencer say this. Now, don't get me wrong, there, there are nasty, malicious people on this world. Are all of those comments going to be coming from a nice place? No. Okay, some people some people are just out for blood and they will say whatever they can to be as mean as possible. I've experienced it. I've seen it happen to other people as well. However, people aren't saying things for no apparent reason. You're not going to have that amount of people coming at you for no apparent reason, okay? But there, there's going to be a reasoning why. There's going to be a bit of content you've put out that is going to offend some people. And that's just the way that it is. But so many influencers say hurt people hurt people. Maybe in certain circumstances, yeah, but not for everyone. No way. Our videos triggered something inside them and they had nowhere else to put that hate. That's just not the type of audience that we want to have. Every, everybody say, just ignore the hate, you know, block them, you know, move on. Don't worry about the haters. Haters are gonna hate. But for me, at the end of the day, and what I've realized you know, as, as in making these decisions, as a content creator and making films, I wanna make films that people enjoy. So for me, it's just not worth it. People are just hating me and making fun of me and the way we live our lives. That's not my mission and that's not my goal in this whole YouTube content creator journey. And the saddest part of it all were, were all these hate comments were from people that are age 25 and younger making these horrible, awful statements. Yeah, don't be attacking the way people look and their mannerisms and all that because that's horrible. But what I will say is that what she just pulled up was just like a general analytic of how old people are how old people are that's not going to be the people that are leaving the comments that's just going to be obvious well i mean she might think that but that's just going to be an overall glimpse into her youtube channel analytics so just to say that that all the negative comments were coming from this age group isn't very fair because you don't know that for sure another thing we want to touch on is it's it took away a lot of time short form video or at least in the success that we had we had to post constantly i mean i'm talking three to five videos a day every single day seven days a week and it got so bad to the point where if you felt like you didn't feel like making a video that day or you kind of ran out of time you felt guilty and you felt anxious because oh my god now i've got to start over the algorithm is going to hate me and that's just a pressure i don't want and i don't need in my life and i think that's another big part of us deciding to walk away from short form short Form. And this is to the platforms too. Allow people to be bullies, to be trolls, to hurt other people purposefully. And there's no recourse with that. Sorry, I've just missed a whole chunk because the dad was basically talking about like from a business standpoint, which isn't very interesting to this video. Um, they're basically going on about how short form videos are ruining the platform. Um, and I think I don't have any experience of making short short form videos. I've got no interest in wanting to do it. I like watching them. I love TikTok. You know, I watch this and that. I think that because you've got such a short, short few seconds to grasp people, if you're then posting controversial things, that is the only bit that people have then seen from you. So that is what they're going to run with constantly. So them at the very beginning saying, oh, well, we were trying to do controversial things to get people hooked, to get, you know, to get a viral video. That, 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 that is the reasoning why you're now getting these results. This is why, because if you're not naturally very controversial people and you're putting out that kind of content, it's going to confuse people. It's going to confuse your audience, but you shouldn't have done it in the very first place. However, if you're a creator, someone can report your account like that and it gets taken away. So there's no filter. The human connection is gone. With long form video, you get to know people. You get a bigger picture of what matters. With short form video, you either have to be super controversial, you have to trigger people, you have to be half naked, or you have to get really political and polarizing. Like short form is tearing this country apart and we've seen it firsthand. Right, I do think we're being a little bit dramatic here. I don't think it's tearing the country apart, these short form videos, all right? I think that they're massively, they're not really, you know, they're not really helping people's mental skills because obviously it's a lot of very, very, very quick content. Your brain can't really keep up with it all the time. But that's not true at all. I follow some great people on TikTok um, and YouTube short, mostly TikTok. And it's not controversial. They're not naked. And they're not trying to get a rise out of people. They're just funny or I like watching what they do in a day. 
like and then there's nothing the matter with them do you know what i mean like i think you guys are lashing out because what you were trying to do wasn't wasn't working for us connection with people is everything i love people and i love to lift them up and make them feel like they're worthy and they are enough i did daily dose of jen which was shorts just kind of lifting you up giving you positive affirmation you know, giving you some encouragement and love i want you to know you are awesome you are so incredibly amazing i want you to keep going do not give up and then the bullies and the trolls jumped over to those and started attacking me as a person. It's because, like you said at the very beginning, you guys are trying to be controversial and get a rise out of people and favour the algorithm and, you know, be, be recommended and all of that. So then when you then try and do something that isn't like that, people aren't going to like it. It's like the whole thing of Anna Ciccone at the minute. She's tried to be controversial and then she then tries to post something that is not controversial and people jump on her and then she then goes well why is everyone being like this and it's like because you can't you can't do both things you cannot be both things i won't lie these daily affirmation things i think they're great in person in person great online i really don't like them i find them too staged to find them too much and this woman jen she makes a point all the time of saying how much she loves her fans how much she loves people and i am actually under the impression that you can't love someone that you don't know based on a comment online. The, don't get me wrong, there's quite a few of you guys, um, long-term sub subscribers, some of you short-term subscribers that I've actually built a bit of a rapport with that, you know, I, I see your icon, I see a message, I know instantly who you are, I talk to you in private DMs and we have a good little chat and it's really, really nice and I think of you like a little internet friend. But I would never go so far to say that I love anyone that I've never met in person and people influencers do this quite a lot and i find it to be quite jarring um and borderline fake and whether or not she might just be one of those people that does really just love to love people um but i i find it quite disingenuous just whenever anyone does that or says that they love people that they don't know and makes a big song and dance about really really caring about their audience if they're getting paid I don't know. I just, I, th that's just my own opinion. I don't believe anything of what they're saying because they don't know me. But when you see that over and over and over again, it's like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? There's no connection with short form. You, you can't grow a community with short form. You can grow a community of trolls that hate you and just subscribe to you to make fun of you. But you can't get to know people, learn who they are, what they love to do. That's our passion is to get to know you and to love you. For me entering 2023, I, I had a goal and a mission. I'm gonna cut loose of things that don't serve me. And short form was a big one. That was a big anchor weighing me down, creativity wise, happiness wise, and a lot of time. So it had to go. It may work for you and that's great. But for us, I think I like the path we're on. I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna do it again because I don't wanna have to eat my words. But for now, I like the trajectory we're heading in and I think it's gonna be a good year for us. I had to edit out bits and bobs just because they were literally repeating themselves and I'm going to be, you know, I'd be here for about half an hour and nobody wants that. Um, I am just going to say, like, I follow a lot of people of, they're not family vloggers, I follow a lot of people doing short form and it works great. Uh, there's no controversy, there's no this and that. Um, I do know that there are a lot of family vloggers and sort of van life, mum life, there's a whole mixture that manage to do these short form videos and they don't get this amount of pushback. Otherwise, you know, they, they don't, they don't. I've seen it, they don't. I'm not saying that there aren't internet trolls, there aren't people being mean and malicious out there because there most definitely is. That's not what I'm saying. I think that this video, would, would just it was just a very, very, very long explanation as to why they're not doing short form, basically because they're getting bullied off by the trolls. I think that in a lot of these kind of cases, you need to take a step back and go, well, why are people angry in the very first place? And it's not worth it just saying hurt people, hurt people. Because like they said at the very beginning, keep on bringing this up, they said that they were doing things to get a rise out of people so that, so that it would become, you know, a viral video. They said that. So then you then can't pause and go, well, then how come they're not liking my inspirational speeches? How come they're not liking this and that? It's because once you've upset people, and it's espe especially if it's short form, because you'll see you will keep on being recommended those videos time and time again scroll and scroll again the internet doesn't forget stuff like that i will say that if you're getting disgusting messages on that about your daughter then just remove any single thing that has your kids in it 
because that is what the internet can do and it's disgusting but you can't sit there and talk about it being so horrible but still have those videos up that doesn't make any sense anyway i hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world take care of each other take care of yourselves and i will catch up with you guys in the next video